Hello, everybody, and welcome to a very special video here on the channel. Today, I am joined by a special guest who just won Pro Tour Phyrexia. He's a member of the MTG Hall of Fame. He also has six Grand Prix wins to his name, and he is all around one of the best players in the game. A near unanimous vote into the Hall of Fame as soon as he was eligible. It is Reed Duke joining us uh, for a draft today. What's good, Reed? Hey, Nikolai, thank you for that really kind introduction. Um, I'm happy to be here. Let's have some fun. Awesome. So, Reed, you just won the Pro Tour, and as part of that Pro Tour, you went 5-1 and one during the drafting portion. What was it like preparing for Phyrexia, and what are your general thoughts on the format? Well, for starters, it was really fun just being back to a paper Pro Tour and getting to play some competitive limited, which is something that I, I really missed in the last couple of years. Um, yeah, the... The format, <laughs> well, put it this way. I think every draft format is really, really, really fun for like the first 10 drafts, almost no matter what. And then what separates the really good formats from the really, uh, from the, the less good formats is like, if you're still excited to do draft number 26, 27, you know, 51. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I haven't gotten to that point yet with Phyrexia. I probably only did in the ballpark of 10 drafts uh, before the Pro Tour, because mm -hmm. it's usually pretty close okay. proximity to set release. Nice. Um, so, yeah, no complaints from me. Uh, I enjoyed uh, learning about it, and I think there's at least a couple of cool archetypes that you can you could sink your teeth into. So with, um, the, with the only 10 drafts before the Pro Tour, do you have, like, teammates that are giving you a lot of info on the set? Do you, like, balance that by, like, you test constructed, they test draft? Or how does that end up working out in the dynamic of getting ready for such a big event? Well, it's certainly a uh, quality over quantity uh, sort of situation where, y yeah, you, you do have to put a lot of effort into the Pioneer uh, or the, the constructed portion of the Pro Tour, too. So it's not like you could just sit in front of your computer drafting 12 hours a day like I, I would like to. <laughs> um, instead, it's more, you know, we, we try to play these house pod drafts with a really high level of competition. We talk mm -hmm. over the picks and the deck building choices. We have a big limited meeting where we sort of talk about um, things and it's it, you, you'll, you'll hear, hear conversations like, oh, I didn't have a chance to draft blue black very many times, but um, you know, Martin Yuzo loves that archetype. So yeah. let's, let's hear from him how to, how to, you know, get the primer of how to draft that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of just sharing collective wisdom rather than brute forcing everything by ourselves. Yeah. Very, very good stuff. Uh, before we dive in, are there any cards or archetypes that you would hope to end up in when we, before we kick off the draft, like a certain like archetype that you would hope to draft or are you just flexible to anything? Some amount of flexibility going into the Pro Tour. I my favorite color was red, and my least favorite color was blue. Like I, you know, I'm willing to draft blue, but it's it's not my first choice. It's usually if the color is super open, or if I open Blue Sun's Twilight, or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. Same question for you though. What, what's your your couple sentence overview of the format, and what do you like to draft? I think my couple sentence overview would be that it seems very fast. I don't know if that holds up when everyone is snapping up the cards, like probably happens at the Pro Tour, but it has felt like I can get completely cl clobbered uh, compared to some other sets where if I don't have a two drop, I just lose or something. And mm -hmm. then like the colors that I kind of like drafting, I, I really like just the decks that kind of get the person corrupted and then get to use the powerful payoff cards. Um, that's kind of a fun one. Like White Black does that pretty well. So I've had success with that. And then I generally just like, enjoy drafting the slower decks if i have a bomb rare or something that incentivizes me to do that so like i enjoy the decks where i have like zopandrel or something like that like a seven drop mythic bomb it's like oh i can play a little slower because if i cast this i win but yeah um cool let's dive into the draft and i'll be getting your insights on the picks and uh things of that nature uh do you prepare for when you are doing those 10 practice drafts? Do you generally do those on Magic Online or where do you generally do those? Or are those just those in-person ones with your team? Yeah, the best is the in-person ones with the team. Um, and then usually my second choice is Magic Online, mm -hmm. mostly because uh, the Pro Tour is, is played best of three. So I like yeah. to play best of three um, yeah. when I'm practicing the, for that too. And the competition's higher because it's like, the people that play on MTGO are like the ones that like really want that pure magic experience. No arena tells or hand smoother or anything like that. Just magic the gathering. 
which yeah, by the way i think that's the funniest tweet i've ever seen like i don't normally look at twitter stuff that much but the the tweet where uh somebody said uh man reed duke winning the pro tour right after huey becomes in charge of organized play and then you said i think what favored me was a lot of rounds of magic got played that just that just destroyed me when i read that that was the best tweet i've ever seen in my life i think <laughs> yeah I'm, yeah i'm glad you like that Oh gosh, looks like a bunch of people are afraid to join the queue with us because we've got so much power just lined up here. They're like, man, the Pro Tour champ is in our pod. We have to dodge this one. But it looks like we found one now. Okay, so you open up your first pack and what do you generally look at? Do you look at the rare first? Do you like go through sequentially and like give yourself a bit of a sweat? What do you like to just go for when you open your pack? Uh, look at the, the rare, I, I look at the rare first because if it's, there's certain rares where you basically know you're not going to pick a common. Um, mm -hmm. But once you know what you're going to pick, it's good to spend the rest of the time sort of processing what else is going on with the pack. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you feel about this Archfiend of the Dross? When I looked at it the first time, I thought it was unplayable because I just, my mind immediately went to the worst case scenario of them putting pacifism on it. But then I played it a couple times and it just like always wins in like two turns. So I think it's pretty good. Um, and I yeah. would take it here. Yep. Yeah, I think I think uh, that was, I not it's not a card I've played with much, but it, I think that was our consensus that this was going to be a better first pick than any other common. And you just try to dodge that, that nightmare scenario that you mentioned of it getting pacified. Yeah. Somebody pointed out to me that you can sacrifice it to certain effects in the set. And so I think those go up a little bit in priority when you have the Archfiend, but honestly, it's just been a very impressive card when, yeah, when you're drafting, call. how often do you like, like to stay flexible and just take the best card or how much of a power level hit would you be willing to take? to just take another black card just strategically a uh, good question it definitely depends on how good my first pick is if my first pick is just some middling common then sure i'm, I'm happy to stay open and, and, and read the table but if i have like an ultra bomb rare then i'm willing to make some sacrifices to, to make sure i can play with that ultra bomb mm -hmm. rare so in this uh, pack, like, is... yeah in this pack i like i think between the black cards i like the testament bear or the siphoner if you really want a two drop and then um, after that, I'm not even sure what to take. But you were saying about Archie? Um, yeah. Well, I, I guess I'd go with the Siphoner, just with the the sort of baseline level of when, when you're deciding between two similar power level cards, take the cheaper one, especially early mm -hmm. on. Yeah. Um, it would put us in a good spot if we, if we do want to do uh, some corrupted stuff like you talked about before the draft. But yeah, I was just going to say the Archfiend is... is it's not one of the best cards in the set so i would be willing to give up on it if if black's just really not working out but mm -hmm. let's try for it <laughs> yeah exactly okay so in this pack like we've got two black cards now we're kind of narrowing down ambulatory edifice is probably the best black card um but there's also like blade hold war whip which is a completely different direction not no overlap but a very strong card how do you kind of make those sorts of picks where it's like a very strong card that's maybe even better but more narrow or a card that kind of fits with what you already have yeah, here I would just take the Ambulatory Edifice because it would just be a complete 180 to take either of the, the gold cards here. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I don't think there's many decks that can really include Archfiend of the Dross and Bladehold War Whip, so it, it'd kind of be, just be, be mm -hmm. you know, forking your path and then you follow one, one or the other. But here it's like, okay, we have a good card that's in our color and, it, you know, there's, there's a really good chance that we're just going to be able to play all three of these cards. So I think that's a, a cleaner start. I know you said you liked red the best, but where do you put black in your color rankings for this set? Uh, I, yeah, I, I, I was like, red is my favorite, blue is my least favorite, and then the other three are all kind of, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm willing to draft them. Uh, black's yeah. probably the objectively weakest of the non-blue colors, but I just kind of like it, and I think it, it yeah. pairs well with some some of the colors that I like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lots of decisions to be made, which you tend to make the right ones. So here, what do you like in this mm -hmm. pack? I would take the Void Wing Hybrid. So I'm not excited to be moving into blue-black, which I think most people consider to be a little bit of a weak color combination, but this is like this is how you get a good blue-black deck, right? Where it's you, you have black cards that you see... Uh, your your signpost uncommon late. Nobody else at the table is drafting the color combination. So, I'm I'm willing to be the blue black drafter if if it's a really good seat for it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Staying flexible, never getting too committed to one thing or the other. This pack is interesting as well because there's only one black card here, Bone Picker Scourge. 
And then there's like not anything that really screams out to me, at least. Is there any card that you're kind of favoring in this pack? No, I agree with you. It's a tough pack. Um, it feels a little early for me to be excited about picking a Bone Picker Scourge. Mm -hmm. So I could see taking one of the lands or the Cephalopod Sentry or the Quicksilver Fisher. I think if it was me, I would probably take Terramorphic Expanse because I don't mind playing one in just a two-color deck. Mm -hmm. And then if you're playing a slower blue deck, it's sort of a good spot to position yourself to splash a rare if you're fortunate enough to get one. Right, um, that's a good point as well. It's always nice when you have one Terramorphic, you can run one of the off-color basic, and then you have like a Prophetic Prism or something, so you don't really have to like stretch your mana base too far or anything like that. Yeah, exactly. Um, blue, I really like the card that's uh, the Anticipate plus Proliferate. Mm -hmm. So if you, get, if you get a couple of those in a slow deck, it's like, okay, now you're seeing a huge portion of your library every game. You can find your rare, you can find your splash. Yeah. In this pack, I think it's probably between the Raptor and like a Black 2 drop or something. Or we could take Chimney Rabble, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. I agree yeah. with you about the Raptor. I think that's one of the better blue commons, so kind of a nice signal that your neighbors aren't aren't interested in blue mm -hmm. and now we're kind of moving out towards does your like like thought process during a pack change like how late you are within the pack like do you start going like oh i need to start reading signals now or oh this is the part of the pack where i like see like more like of the role players that i'll need to fill out my curve or things like that or is it kind of just like the same thought process during the entire pack or the entire draft no i think it, it definitely changes in the way that you you outlined um at this point in the pack I'm kind of looking if there's like an emergency situation where I need to uh, bail, but I feel, no, I feel good about, about the colors that, that we've chosen. And there's that experimental augury that I mentioned as, as a card I really like. Yeah. It's definitely interesting. I've, I've never actually played prologue to Phyresis. Have you had any experience with this card? No, some people have told me they like it, but I, I much prefer the experimental augury yeah, just because it's, the, the card selection is, is so much more powerful. Yeah, I think it's also just uh, nice to be able to proliferate like random things like oil on the Raptor or yeah, oil absolutely. on the Archfiend especially because Archfiend can like stick around for an extra turn or two so, so if you have um, like proliferation, which is nice. Um, and so as the pack rounds out, this is the first time we get a chance to see what wheels. How, how much do you like spend mental energy clocking the sor sorts of cards that are wheeling for you when you're drafting? Not a tremendous amount. Um... But, you know, he, he, it's, it's more about, like, the signaling. Like, nobody took Eye of Malkitor, which is a good sign that blue is open. I, I would take the Scourge um, yeah. for what it's worth. Just, like, the Eye is very narrow. really good in one of the blue archetypes um, mm -hmm. and not necessarily the deck that, that we're on track for, but it's nice to know that people just aren't snatching up the blue cards. Do you like Surgical Bay here or Meldweb? I would take Surgical Bay. Uh, not like it's a hugely important pick, but I like yeah. I like picking up one or two of those uh, tapped lands. And uh, I, I I was pretty sure this Bone Picker would wheel, which is why I didn't mind taking the Eye of Malkator. But there's also Mal Malkator's Watcher here. Do you actually do you play this card in like any blue deck, or is it just an artifact synergy card for you? Uh, well, I would certainly play it if I was hard up for a, a two mana play. Like pretty much any anything that can impact the board for less than two mana is nice to have in your pile, just <laughs> in case you need it. Mm -hmm. Blocking those barbed batter fists and stuff like that. So at a pro tour level event, you don't get to look at your picks as you're making them. Are there any shortcuts you use, like specific cards that you just like keep in mind? Like, oh, this is a card that I have, or how do you keep track of that mentally um, without having to like, or do you just memorize so every card that you've taken? You're going to remember like your most important cards. Like, you, nobody's going to forget that they first picked Arch, Archfiend of the Dross. But the most important thing is you get a review period between packs. So that's when you you kind of have a look and, and see, okay, where am I behind schedule? Do I have enough two drops? Um, what's my mm -hmm. mana looking like? So you, you just latch onto a couple factors that you want to keep in the, the forefront of your mind. You said something there that uh, resonated with me, but first let's choose what we want to take out of this pack because it is an interesting one. We could make a complete audible towards red for Solfim. There's also just a couple of blue cards. Which Which card are you eyeing here? Yeah, a little bit of a disappointing pack because there's no standout card in blue and black. Mm -hmm. um, I might just take Solfim because the power level difference is is so extreme between that and any any card in blue or black. Like these blue or black cards, it's like 
I, they might make the deck, but they're kind of marginal. I don't think we're really yeah. going to miss them. And then maybe there's some crazy turn of events where, where um, we wind up like blue, red, splash, black or something like that. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. I don't know. That, that pack was, was, was really tough bad. and not that exciting. Yeah. And now this pack, we see a uh, couple more two drops. There's like a, a removal spell, a bounce spell. There's the skitter fang. What do you want to take here? Probably Serum Snare, but this is where my uh, inexperience with drafting blue might might show through. Like I could see an argument that Mesmerizing Dose is better or the Skitter Fang or even taking an mm -hmm. off-color card. What What do you think? I think Serum Snare is a, is a nice pickup here. It's just, a, it's just a solid card. Skitter Fang is better if you have a lot of creatures, in my opinion. And Dose is just yeah. kind of hard to cast. But uh, you mm -hmm. said something when you were talking about your review period. You said uh, that you like to make sure you're on schedule for your draft. When you say that, what does that like mean? Like, what are you tracking to be on schedule with? Well, a huge part of my draft strategy is just avoid the total train wrecks. So one mm -hmm. thing about the Pro Tour is, you know, when you're drafting on Arena, if you have a bad draft, you can kind of scrap it and go on to the next one. But if yeah. you have a bad draft in the Pro Tour, you still have to be able to scrape out those one or two wins. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's really important to not have things completely go off the rails. So yeah. I do a lot of picks that I call like train wreck insurance where, okay, like I'm hoping not to play with this card, but I need to make sure I have it. I need to make sure I have the low quality two drop just mm -hmm. so that I can have a deck with two drops. So counting yeah. your number of playables, making sure you're not switching colors too much, yeah. keeping your mana curve functional. These are all important things. How much harder would you say like a pro tour draft is than a one that you would do like even versus like in your like online or something on arena or something like that? Like how much harder do you think it is to get those playables? Uh, it is noticeably harder because everyone at the pod is good and nobody's really taking like nonsense cards. Um, mm -hmm. It's not, you know, it's not crazy. Like I, I, I heard someone say that Drafting on Arena and Magic Online isn't doesn't even count as practice for a pod draft. I think that's like a little bit extreme. I, yeah. I wouldn't go that far, but you, you do notice the difference when you're when you're mm -hmm. drafting in a pod with really good strong players. Yeah, that makes sense. Here I've just been kind of taking the annihilating glares. I feel like the picks aren't <laughs> that crazy. Um I, mm -hmm. there's not like huge options. So it's been, it's been it's nice to kind of just ask about those general things. Um but yeah, do you think that like like, what do you think is the, 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 ooh, this is actually an interesting pick first before we talk about anything else. Um, there's another watcher, there's a synthesizer, there's a draw spell. What do you want to take in this pack? Hmm. Again, uh, you might, I don't, I don't really have instincts for a pick like this. I mm -hmm. think having one Vivisurgeon's Insight is going to be good in a deck like this, though we might have an opportunity to get one later. Um, yeah. Maybe the Icar Synthesizer is good because. Yeah. It plays great with the augury, I must say, and also with serums. Yeah, it sure. Let's counters. take let's take the synthesizer. See how I'm that big, goes. I'm a big fan of the synthesizer. I think it's a great okay. Card. That's good to know. And uh, just because in general the synthesizer just I feel like it grows grows way easier than I thought it would. <laughs> like I thought it was never going to get to the fourth counter, but it kind of does a lot of the time. And how do you feel about uh, speculating on a serum core chimera here? Oh, uh, we could go for the dream. We already have the Terramorphic Expanse. We could just go for some, like, crazy <laughs> Grixis build. I mean, as you said, this isn't the Pro Tour where we don't have to avoid train wrecking. We can completely train wreck. You've already won the Pro Tour. You have nothing left to prove, Reed. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Also you, don't, also, you don't have to play the matches with the deck. I'll play the matches, so I'll take any and all blame for if we lose. So it's perfect. like the perfect scenario. We can take the, the boldest picks. But looks like blue is open, at least. Like, pick seven, we see three solid blue commons, it looks like. Which is... yeah pretty great i would take the raptor here because it's just good it's always good and it's it's uniquely mm -hmm. good if we do wind up in some kind of blue red oil yeah um, definitely like one thing that's cool is if you get say three gataxian raptors you can start taking the uh uh the one red combat trick that gives two oil counters and just uh... attack people for, for eight for eight you know eight <laughs> oh flying God. These are the sorts of combos that are, are excellent to assemble. Okay, so there's a Chrome Prowler. I think blue is the only color we know we're playing, and then there's just, like, random stuff in other colors. There's a Rat, which is probably way better than the Prowler. Um, I don't know. I don't. Think yeah, so. good this turning point. I, I would take the Rat there because, you know, the single most likely thing is, is to be a blue-black proliferate deck, and if you yeah. want to have access to the um, toxic corrupted stuff, you probably need to make a pick like that. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, want to try a yeah. Vivisurgeon's insight here? Lock oh, up that that one of. Let's do it. We're locking it in. With 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 certain cards, have you uh, had good experiences with these like cert like these sphere lands like like Surgical Bay? I guess we're seeing it in another pack here. Like, have you had good experiences with these? I do like them. Um, but you know, the way I approach Magic is is I I always tend to rate cards like that higher than most people. I I, I sort of deprioritize the nut draw curve outs and more go for like consistency and how am I going to win when the game goes long. Um, also worth noting if ye, if for players who play mostly best of one, those cards are probably a little bit weaker because mm -hmm. of the speed and like the hand smoother and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, yeah I, I, I like having one or two of the tap plans. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, it, that's been always kind of like one of your, uh, not uh, calling cards. Maybe that is a good way to say it, but like the you always seem to like to play the decks where you get to make a lot of decisions and have like a lot of more, like consistency in, in your game plan versus the ones where it's like you do your thing or you get completely obliterated. It feels like. Right. Oh, we get the okay. last pick. I guess we, uh, I didn't think we'd get one last pick, but I guess we're learning a valuable lesson there on where people prioritize it. So if you were doing like, obviously this isn't a pro tour draft because there's probably been some picks you'd make a little differently. But if you were tracking and like doing your uh, like checklist mentally, where would you kind of be thinking about this deck at the moment? Like, would you be worried? Would you be kind of like, oh, mm. I don't really know. Yeah, where, where would you be thinking? I would be worried about my own, like, you know, pilot error chance of messing it up because it's a complicated draft for sure. But I would feel really good about, like, okay, the blue core, blue is super open, and then I could be either blue black, blue red, or maybe some kind of Grixis deck. Here, I would actually take the Hex Gold Slash because I think it's a lot better than anything available in blue and black. And mm -hmm. this is sort of, you know, one one of the reasons why speculating on the Solfim and the Serum Core Chimera is good, just because sometimes weird things happen, like you open a pack with a great red card and nothing in, in blue and black. Oh yeah, definitely. I think our deck could definitely just be a blue red deck. We have the Archfiend that we first picked. We like fourth picked a Voidwing hybrid, and after that we haven't really seen really anything other than than these annihilating glares, which are technically even splashable. Um and then this so here's like, a big a big turning point is you know we could take the black removal spell or the churning reservoir, and that's I think I think this is it I think this is the what moment. Would, what would you what would you take? Reed? That that's what the viewers are here to see. What would you take in this spot? The Ooh, anointing affliction, man. or would you take the churning reservoir? Let's go with the churning reservoir. I like it. Let's go. I like that it's pick as tough. well. I because I I would be normally open to a Grixis deck except that our best red card and our best black card are both double color. Oh, definitely. So I, I'd 100%. kind of rather just pick, and I, it's like, I want to play the Serum Core Chimera, I want to play the Hex Gold Slash, but that is a really tough pick. I wouldn't fault anybody for taking the, the removal spell. Yeah, and now we're looking at, just every pack seems to have a billion blue cards in it, and then like a couple cards here and there. Um, I I don't know, maybe Surgical Skull Bomb here, or another Surgical yeah. Bay, or... I'm in for the soldier, surgical skull bomb. Um, since we gave up on, since we might be giving up on some black cards, want to make sure you're comfortable with uh, the number of playables. So I would take a blue playable over the surgical bay at this point. If it was best of three, I would consider maybe taking the counter spell because you want to board that in in certain matchups. But mm -hmm. getting pretty rewarded for choosing red, uh, I guess, <laughs> because Rebel Salvo is pretty excellent. Just kind of an insane. Yeah, card, for sure. Honestly. Just, I feel like, uh, oh, man. This, what'd you say? What were you going to say? Just, I'm um, dreaming. Like, I, I don't think it's going to happen, but in, in the dream scenario where there's no one else at the table drafting blue, if, if, if the experimental augury could wheel, that's oh, too ambitious wheel. though. It's, it's, it's going to so? wheel, Reed. Oh, I'll bet you it wheels. Nobody else is playing blue. We're the only blue drafter. We're getting every right. single blue card in every single pack from here on out. Well, man, if, if, if it, getting, getting both of those cards out of the same pack would just be <laughs> over the top. Uh, there's no such thing as over the top. I mean, this is this is MTG Arena we're talking about. We can get whatever we want. This is where dreams are made, Reed. I'm mm -hmm. sure you, as someone who won like the mocks to make your entrance onto the pro scene, the internet is where dreams come true. Okay, and then like, <laughs> this pack doesn't have much for us. I, I must say, uh, there's I guess an engraver. I'd, That's actually a great card. Yeah, I like the engraver. I forgot we were playing Red, Red for a second. I got too caught up in like the dreams and all of the fancy <laughs> like talk. I was like, oh yes. We're coming to the place where anything can come true, and yeah, okay. Gosh, now we're just seeing like a couple more. <laughs> I, as I said, we're gonna see every blue card for the rest of the draft, so I guess we can like, I don't know, 
we could take like a flyer or just another surgical bay. We only have one. I don't know if we'd play two in this deck. Sure, you want to take a surgical bay. The five drops are pretty replacement level. Yeah. If I'm if not... we were still trying to do black, Pestilent Siphoner would be okay. But I, I'm not that excited about doing like yeah. a, a blue black toxic deck at this me, point. Me, me neither. I think we've kind of got a good lane here. The Immobilizer is actually interesting because it works great with the Reservoir. Like mm -hmm. that's a sick combo. Yeah, I think, it also works I, I think that's harder. perfect here. My goodness. This deck is sick. This is way cooler than the decks I draft when I uh, draft alone. Just <laughs> all right. classic Reed Duke bringing all of the all of the fun to the draft here we today. My goodness. And just classic seeing all of the blue cards. I guess, yeah, there's nothing really else for us. Have you played... Do you think Thrill of Possibility is playable in this format? It's not exciting, but it's, it's, not, it's not embarrassing either. I actually did play with thrill in the pro tour um because mm -hmm. i had i was just i guess a little a little short on playables i had a red green deck with, where i was i was somewhat concerned about flooding out um mm -hmm. but yeah like I, i'm never embarrassed to put a thrill of possibility in my deck even though it's it, it doesn't make your main deck when things are going like super super well for you yeah that makes sense and then here we're just rounding it out we'll just get any blue cards that we want on the wheel because as as i made my prediction uh, I, I'm optimist. Do you, do you think Hazardous Blast is a card we should consider here? I would I definitely some... take it if it was best of three. Um, I think it's like kind of marginal in whether or not we'd play it in best of one, but there, there are certainly matchups where it's it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some people are like always like hype, like telling me to take the card higher. Man, we're getting closer and closer to the pack that had the augury. I think it's the next pack, and so I'm starting to get kind of uh, anxious. Take, let's take the two five. The two five is actually okay. Okay, perfect. We already have one copy of it, but we'll we'll have a pretty quick look at the deck. No, yeah, we didn't not... wheel the augury. Oh, uh, we wheeled the other blue card in the pack. Gosh, I was too. I flew too close to the sun. I started to. Well, that's okay. It's. Not, I mean, it's not like we sh we were supposed to take the augury over the rebel salvo or anything. I got lost in the sauce. Would have been nice, as, as the saying goes. Yeah, as we all do sometimes. Oh my goodness. Do you? Do you? Like when you're playing, are you always like thinking in the back of your mind, I'm practicing for a high level event, or do you do you like to draft like crazy decks when you get the chance? Well, actually, you know, like I, I specifically like to do unusual things when I'm practicing because oh. you know, I'm gonna be able, I'm gonna be just fine if I'm building a white red beatdown deck when white and red are really open. Like mm -hmm. that's not that's not something that I'm worried about. But it's more like I want to be prepared for when things are not going according to plan and what, what are my backup plans and how do I draft the weird archetypes. So I love to take like weird rares mm -hmm. and build unusual uh, archetypes w when I'm practicing so that I'm just just so that I have a deeper playbook in case uh, I, I need to right. do that. And you can also tell your around. teammates and stuff like that to yeah, help totally. them get more advice. So in the, the first thing I want to ask with this build process is, do you think three tap lands is too many, or do you think playing all three of these is fine? Because we don't really have, uh, we don't really need the terramorphic for color purposes. It would just be like for mana color consistency. Yeah, I would say I'm I, I I don't have a rule against playing the three, but I would maybe have a look at what the final product looks like, like how right, low the so mana curve is, if end. we're going to play sixteen or seventeen lands. Right. But yeah, I, that's that's like a, a marginal sort of fi fine tooth comb type of choice where mm -hmm. I would I would probably make that at the end. Mm -hmm. So my first thoughts on cuts are these Eye of Malkator is not really fitting the control strategy. Um, Makes sense. Logbook being a bit clunky and like probably not needing both Vivis Surgeons insights. So maybe probably cutting one of those. Um, are there any cards that you kind of immediately look to to potentially cut here? Well, I definitely agree with cutting the artifact matters cards. Yeah. And then after that, I would pretty much be just making choices based on mana curve. Okay. Uh, Cuz ev so everything else in the deck is fine. Stuff like um ex escaped experiment, it's like okay, that's not an exciting card, but I'm totally fine to play it if I just want one more two drop in my deck. What do you think your ideal number of two drops would be? I think bring the ending is probably pretty bad in this deck because we don't have a ton of instants and we can't ever corrupt them. So I think that's probably not one we'll think about. But like how many two drops do you want in like an ideal build that you're going for? Like if you could build the perfect deck, how many two drops would it have? I would say it's a problem. I consider it a problem to have less than 
seven proactive things that I can play for less than three mana. Okay. So, um, okay. So we have Hex Gold Slash that's definitely making it. Glistener Seer probably going to make it. And then we have like two, one, two, three, four, five, six, kind of seven. So we've kind of got the bare minimum almost. Yeah. So C Serum Snare is something that I would not consider. Um, a, like that's that's sort of what I meant when I said a proactive right. card that I can play. So C Serum Snare is great in that it it costs a small amount of mana, so I can have like a nice low curve deck and double spell on a, a mid on a mid game turn. But I'm definitely not looking to just like Serum Snare their two drop on turn two. I would I would much right. rather have my own my own creature to play. Um, but maybe bring the ending. You probably could consider something that you can fairly re reliably play on turn two. Um, right. To because interact. Like, yeah. Okay. So those like board affecting type of plays. Yeah. So listener seer sort of hex gold slash sort of bring the ending escaped experiment. Icar synthesizer, like, three Malkator's watchers. So one basically like the Graver. creatures. Cause we have like, a decent number of like two drop creatures and like some one yeah. interaction stuff like that. So, so I'd say mind, we're, we're yeah. pretty much on track. We're, 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 we're where we want to be on track. That's a good way to think about it. Okay. So here I think like maybe cutting a Jataxi and animist and like a vivisurgeons inside or something. Um, are on yeah. Like one, one, four drop one, five drop. How do you feel about the meld web strider? The meld of strider. I am not sure uh, on this card, but uh, I have to say, I had Ben Stark as a guest, and he was hyping it up. Like, he was like, man, Meldweb Strider is the truth. Not, like, exactly that way, but I was kind of thinking about trying it. But I've never played the card myself, and it's I get funny, last pick I was going to say the exact same thing. I, I have <laughs> never played with the Strider myself, but I know that Ben Stark said it was really, really good, and I respect his opinion, so I guess I'm yeah, I'm literally, we I'm do have exactly a proliferate oil deck. I've never, I've never played with or against the Meld Web Strider, but I like have enough like of like man, Ben Stark said it was good, so I kind of, I kind of want to see what it does. <laughs> um, but yeah, if I was making cuts, I'd probably cut one Insight and then one of these Animists, Anatomists. Um, it's funny because and then maybe, uh, maybe the yeah. Escaped Experiment. Yeah, the Escaped Experiment's pretty bad, and that would be like forty, and then just choosing the land thing on like whether to play this Terramorphic Expanse or not. I feel like a third tap land is pretty bad because we kind of have to hit our three drops on time and four drops maybe, but I don't know. Yeah. So I often play 16 lands in this format. Um, this is a nice low curve deck where you could consider it. Also probably fine to play 17 given like double surgical bay, axiom engraver, mm -hmm. serum core chimera, all these cards help with, with not flooding out. Okay. Um, I think what, maybe just cut. Where do you like, stand on that? I think I've never really considered going to 16 because I feel like if I miss a land drop, I just lose. If I miss like a land drop in the first few turns of the game, because in some formats, it's like, oh, if, if you're just playing a couple two drops, you can buy some time. But I felt like getting run over a lot. But that's probably because uh, if I'm playing best of one or something like that, um, it happens more frequently. But I would probably just cut Terramorphic Expanse, play nine, eight. And I think if I was to play less lands, I would just. I would probably be, because I have two surgical bays, I'd be fine with running uh, like that. So I'd probably just do this and then have like a seven, nine, eight type of split here. Um, yeah, it looks perfect. Awesome. Well, um, Reed, it has been excellent having you on as a guest. Thank you so much for sharing your insights and congratulations again on winning the Pro Tour. Where can people find your stuff if they want to read your fantastic articles or watch your fantastic gameplay videos or uh interact with you live on your excellent stream or where where can people find you well yeah thanks so much for having me nikolai uh most of my stuff goes up on channelfireball.com i written stuff on on the website itself and then my my uh, video content on the channel fireball youtube channel um before i drop off here can i just hear your uh final debrief like do you consider this to be a a, a good deck and do you excellent. are you comfortable with how, how the draft went anything anything you would have done significantly differently i think that this deck is excellent and i think that the willingness to take soul Thim, pack two pick one was like a real turning point because it's almost like we had that archfiend of dross which is a bomb but we kind of like were willing to replace it with a different bomb because this card's also like similarly unbeatable for certain decks and so i think that that was like a real turning point because then we kind of got rewarded by ending up with like the serum core we got a late Rebel Salvo. And so I think this deck ended up quite good. And I'm glad that we decided to go with red instead of with black. 
and also that we were we had dreams of getting lost in the sauce and going for three colors <laughs> at one point which made the draft more exciting and uh i think there's a lot of good cards here even though blue's a little bit weaker i feel like when you're getting every single blue card under the sun it's definitely something still worth playing so i think the if i was to give a post-op uh i would uh give us a high high marks on in terms of the way we drafted and it'll be fun to play and uh all of that stuff but yeah also folks if you are curious reed duke wrote some articles on what it was like to win the pro tour and so i'll link uh his article in the comments in the description of this video so you can read that because it's always awesome uh hearing those tournament reports from especially when things have gone well so really awesome having reed on as a guest and uh, i'll be playing these <laughs> matches myself gonna let reed go now and uh hopefully we'll make him proud i'll see you folks in the games if you are enjoying my videos and would like to help support the Nikolai Bolas channel, you can do so at patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas. There are tons of cool rewards for patrons at any level, so even $2 a month goes a long way and gains you access to things like my tier lists for each set. I'd like to give a special shout out to those who support the channel at the credits level, and also want to thank all the patrons who supported in February as it helped me get to the guest drafts goal on the Patreon. If it's something you're interested in, check it out linked in the description down below. But without further ado, let's get to the games. Welcome to round one. It's just me now, but that just means it's up to me to live up to the large responsibility that I have heaped upon myself at this moment. Because... I, I had the Pro Tour champion helping me win, and if I can't win with the Pro Tour champion's assistance, am I just doomed as a magic player? That's the real question. I kept this hand because it has a 2-drop, a 3-drop, and kind of a removal spell. I wanted those, like, proactive 2-drops like Reed was talking about, though, and so getting a proactive one is definitely nice. The Axiom Engraver, and then I can get the Raptor, and then I can play this and proliferate. Really the dream scenario. Man, my preview card. I always feel a surge of pride when I see Evolving Adaptive, uh, but when it's on the other end of the board, it usually like ends up just crushing me. So, um, Also a little bit of mixed emotion with this card. <laughs> it's like, oh, they have the Evolving Adaptive, let's go! And then they just destroy me. And uh, yeah. So we're going to play the Gitaxian Animus next turn. We don't really need to use this yet. We have lands and spells. There's nothing we're particularly digging for. No cards that are bad. Oh, they did that pre-combat. Oh my gosh, that's like, I don't know if my opponent is operating on that level, but if they have the plus two plus two combat trick, that would be absolutely genius. They do this pre-combat to make me attack them with my Axiom Engraver. I'm not going to attack. They're too smart. They're too smart for me because I would never be able to attack because they have a one two, but they did this pre-combat so they could have plus two plus two, but I'll just block with this thing. Oh my gosh, that's... That's on another level. I really hope they have the plus two plus two, because that's just a genius play if it's true. Okay. So here we're just gonna block the three three with our one four, keep our guy around. Nice, so far so good. We'll play this and we will tap it. And here's where I'm hoping for that Meldweb Strider. It's so funny to me that Reed had heard the same exact piece of in insight on Meldweb Strider from the same source. So I guess everyone's just got their trusted uh, back pocket uh, insight. I don't think that's a sentence, but I'm kind of still... Uh... I, I used a lot of phrases that I don't normally use because I was definitely... Uh... Not flustered, that's not the right word, but I was... Uh... Oh... Plus one, plus two. So that can make this into five. Which means that I don't want that to happen. So what I'm going to do here, which is something that I can only do because this thing resolved. If I normally just let this resolve, this would become a four-powered creature. But I can fizzle it by having my creature kill itself. So Gitaxian Raptor will sacrifice itself for the cause. But to finish my uh, previous statement, I will say I was, uh, I've never had an interaction with Reed Duke where he was a guest before. Oh, it still works. Never mind. I. Whew. So I guess I did mess that up because if I let the fight spell resolve, then this thing would have one toughness and wouldn't be able to attack me. I done messed up. Oh well. But yeah, I uh, definitely got. Whew. Just my my phrases aren't coming out very naturally at the moment. I'm going to actually discard this mountain. I'm not sure how many activations I'm going to get out of this thing, but if I draw a land, I'm fine. If I draw a uh, 
spell, I'm even happier. And so, yeah, I just got to cycle through a little bit there. Play land. I'm going to play the Icker Synthesizer. Start stacking that up. They only have one card in hand, so I'm not particularly worried about them punching through my Animus. There's not tons of cards they could have that kill it. Almost attacked all. Okay. Gosh, and whenever Reed Duke asked me a question, I was like, okay, this is my chance. I, maybe he's using it to prepare for some tournament I don't know about. Maybe he's going to use the insights when he wins the Arena Open this weekend. Oh, gosh. Oh, no. This can have planeswalkers. Yes, it can. You're not with me. You're with Phyrexia. Oh, gosh. Take this land from Phyrexia. My goodness, how am I going to kill that? What's the ultimate? Oh, no. Well, this is my, my chance to chain together some spells off Experimental Augury. I'll say that much. Oh, nice. Here we go. So first, I'm going to start with the Experimental Augury. Get a counter, and then proliferate that counter. So I would love to take Soul Fib. But I think I'm going to take Serum Snare instead. No, I don't have a blue source, though. Oh, that's so rough. I think I'm still going to take the Serum Snare. Because then this can get up to two counters. And then if I find... A land. Specifically an island. I can Serum Snare balance that proliferate. So now I can find Hex Gold Slash or Island. Beautiful. Hex Gold Slash is just what I wanted. Do they have the plus two plus two? They did not. So me playing around it earlier was not justified. And then I attack the Hoth. And now next turn after they plus, I can kill it with Molten Rebuke. I don't know if that was exactly what I had to do, but... Because now I don't have my, like, indestructible guy, which would have been really good. I guess we'll see how it works out. But now if they want to use this to kill my guy, they have to get rid of it anyway. Sure. And I even get to kill their Hexgold Halberd, which is not nothing. Nice. I'll actually keep that island around, so if I draw my draw spell, I can use it. Planeswalker. Equipment. You know what? I actually will get rid of the island here. I just want more action. I'm going to start chipping in for three. Fine. It's retreat, then. My 2-5 holds the fort, and I have him on a seven-turn clock. Gosh, I feel like I uh, reach new levels of focus whenever I have a guest on, because it's like, you gotta you gotta win when you have those, those guests feeding you the picks, even if we did go off the rails a little bit, which was fun, because I like going off the rails sometimes. It's nice to know that the best players in the world also enjoy that from time to time. Let's go, Rebel Salvo. Definitely a nice upgrade over the card we did have. We're holding this guy back so we can block this 2-2 two, two, and this 1-1 one, one and stuff if they do kill the Animist. Anatomist, I mean. Okay. They're probably feeling the pressure here a little bit. Okay, get rid of another land. Hmm. So we can kill a token, but I don't think we need to do that yet. And now we're going to play the island, because we only have one charge left on that, so we're going to want to wait on this anyway, and this way we can keep attacking them. And we can even start chipping in with this Malkator's Watcher starting next turn. It was very interesting to me to hear that Reed had done 10 drafts, because... Uh, it just shows how much he trusts his teammates and is willing to take feedback on stuff.
because it's really cool that uh, they're able to collaborate. Because it, it is really hard to prepare for the Pro Tour. And he clearly was a master of his Pioneer deck and stuff. I actually made a video where I played with it, and the deck is in a very finely tuned machine. Uh, but it's also... Ooh, that's a good draw. But it's also definitely um, cool that they work together so synergistically. I almost uh, asked him what his role on the team was. Like, was he like a constructed specialist or a limited guy that they like went to for any specialized questions they had and then my mind was like it's reed duke he's his his advice means a lot on any topic that he chooses to talk about it was like yeah i was like man what a silly question it's like the sort of thing where it's like if you can get like to use a sports metaphor it's like uh what's what is what are you contributing to the team and you like ask like Lionel Messi or something like that like what are you contributing to the team are you more of like a goal scorer or a defender or a passer like what are you contributing it's like <laughs> it's Lionel Messi he's like the best at everything and that's kind of how it feels like asking questions to read Duke it's like I don't know but also at the same time he's so down to earth and like <laughs> I don't know he's polite he asks me what I think of cards but it's like oh that's nice thank you Aww. What are they going to return to my hand? Oh. They're going to kill my Watcher? Normally, I wouldn't want this to happen because it's a two-turn clock this way, but I'm actually okay with this. If I draw a card, I'll be fine. And here, I'm going to activate this and get myself a 1-1. I thought they were going to kill the Reservoir and I was going to bounce it back to my hand. And we find a new Watcher anyway? That's called living the dream. That is the dream. Opponent's like, oh no. I don't know if anyone's seen those memes of like, that's the moment they realize they screwed up. But also just like Icarus Synthesizer going the distance. This is why I love this card. Such a sick card. Also, Engraver plus Reservoir is like such a good combo. That we are threatening lethal next turn and they have nothing they can do about it other than kill my creatures or kill me which hopefully we can't do i'm gonna play this land because that lets me hold up both of my spells and i don't think i need to really make another one one here where i was playing both of my spells could be relevant if they do have some sort of like buff their entire team and attack me with them going on sure So they're going to attack everyone. Actually, they don't have to. They they should attack with this Cacophony Scamp. Them not attacking with the Cacophony Scamp is, is trolling, pretty much. Okay, because I now... Because this thing has to be able to kill my Malkator's Watcher so they can live an extra turn. That's the only way that they win can win this game, is if they like somehow buy an extra turn against this... And if they don't attack with this, it means they can't have it die or they can't sacrifice it. Because as it is, I'm going to Serum Snare this thing. If they attack me with it. But if they don't attack me with it, I just win. Okay. They found the line. Ironically, if I had hit my opponent for one point of damage with this Axiom Engraver on turn like three, none of this would matter at all. Which is also really funny. Hit me for one... Three, three, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So first things first, we're gonna bounce this. Not that any of this matters, because they're just dead. I have two flyers. is three four five six seven got the first win we're on the board oh they engraved it away got 
the win. Okay. I still think it was correct to bounce. Got there. Let's go. We're on the board. See you folks next round. Welcome to another round. And at long last, the Meldweb Strider has made its appearance. We're going to keep this hand. Oh my gosh. Whoo! Crawling course, sure. Sure. I am going to cast Experimental Augury this turn, because the Turning Reservoir is just less mana efficient, and if I draw a 2-drop, I can play that, or if I find a 3-drop, I can block the cores. And this way, also, if they play a card, I can Hex Cold Slash, I can do that. Ooh, they don't have a follow-up? Yikes. Perfect. So I can get the Raptor, and then... They also make 0. How about that? Okay. Play the Jachaxian Raptor. If they do have plus two, plus two, it won't work. Ah, they do have plus two, plus two, and they realized it wouldn't work. Good work, Jachaxian Raptor. Good work indeed. Never mind. Your work has been overestimated. Actually, we can use Hex Gold Slash pretty effectively here. Kill the Annex Sentry, block the Crawling Forest. And we have a soul fin. The tap land here is a little bit annoying. But mo mostly it's just not having enough red. I hope they don't have a second complete devotion. Because that would completely wreck me. Oh! Devastating. That's a bad feeling. Hmm. Here, I'm going to just use Rebel Salvo. It's like a similar situation. And even though I like the Chimera a lot here, getting it down to block, things like that, I think it's more important to just like try to stabilize my life total to some degree. Make sure they get a Mite. Do this chirp. And if I find a land, I can just jam Soul him. And that could be unbeatable for them. Wrong land. But we get to see the Meldweb Strider in action. It's a 5-5. They can't attack me. And they can't kill it with certain spells. If I was feeling very cheeky, I would have attacked them, but... So I might as well do this three times. And the reason I'm doing this is because, uh, or two times, because now if I want to block with the Meldweb Strider, I don't have to worry. I can crew. With the Raptor. And because I have this, I can keep putting oil counters onto the Meldweb. Okay, they're out of gas. Oh, opponent. They thought they were going to get out my oil counter, but I used the Raptor. Nobody sees the Meldweb Strider coming. Format All-Star, as I say so myself. So I'm going to play this and the Churning Reservoir. So I can keep stacking up this Meldweb Strider. This is going well, I would say. Sure. They get one hit in. I'm surprised that they didn't equip. I don't know how many more times they're going to be able to hit me. So here, I'm going to put the counter on the Metal Web Strider. That's unfortunate because we can't really use that land, but we can still play it. I know I would like to hold things so I can discard them, but I'm still going to play this because this means I can make a token with the Churning Reservoir. Because I can, like, remove the counter from this Gitaxian Raptor. Make a 1-1. One, one. 
Because every token's relevant here, especially because these are three ones. And I can sack this land, too, coming up. I think I'm going to hit them with this raptor, this chimera. And this counts as non-combat damage, so if I can play this, it'll deal 6 damage. Oh, I can't activate that one. I'll activate this one. I'm going to start by sacking this. See what I shall see. That's a good draw. I now have some chump block action. I've got some guys that can crew the Meldweb Strider. I think we got this. The slow and steady march of progress. I'm going to discard the Axiom Engraver. Kill their duelist. And I did that main phase because if I hit another land, I'd like to play it so I can make a 1 1. I'm not going to send in this guy because I can bounce one of their tokens and then send this guy in and it just works out so much better for me. Gotta be said, the Meldweb Strider has been doing work holding back their forces along with my one force. My gosh. Nahiri, sure. I don't care. Planeswalker it up, buddy. That's a little condescending. Planeswalker it up, opponent. That's a much better sound bite. We'll use that one. Check, check on the editing crew. Can you uh, move out that? Oh, right. I'm the editing crew. We're not going to edit anything. We keep it in. We're doing it live. Oh, gosh. I forgot that was a thing they could do. Huh. Well. Okay. No need to throw anything too crazy out here. They killed my token. Prepare to die. That's unfortunate. We're gonna kill the Nahiri though here, so it won't matter. Actually, do I want to wait and do this on my turn so I can get an extra token? Probably. Keep putting counters on the Serum for. Maybe I should start putting them on this, but. And this thing has an extra oil counter, so it doesn't matter. This goes in here, this goes with them. Play the land, because I will want to play Soul Thim coming up. And I can crew the Meldweb Strider with my three creatures here. Sure. This game is so over. It's one of those ones where you wish you could just show your opponent there your hand and be like, yeah, this game's not ending very well for you.
get rid of the watcher. I feel like it's easier to make use of this. Kill that guy. Activate. Go to attacks. Send in the guys. I could probably just have sent in the Meldwip Strider there too. I don't know what I was thinking. Meldwip Strider can play offense, Nikolai. Just remind yourself of that sometimes. Just crew it up even. But yes, we get the win. Let's go. So far, so good. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's go. Round three, here we come. Welcome to a round. We're keeping this. Round three, so to speak. We're using an Elish Norn avatar. We took a long time on our mulligan thing because I was doing something else with my phone while I was waiting. Okay. Ah, they say hello to me. Perhaps they recognize me. Perhaps they're a fan. Oh, <gasps> they are a fan! Time for me to use my emotes to say hello. My goodness. They know who I am. Zero turbo. Maybe not. Maybe I'm reading too much into it at the same time. I will continue reading too much into it because it's fun that way. And we will continue to use our Hedron emotes. Whee! I love the Hedron emotes. Dancing. Okay. Hex Gold Slash at the ready. The beautiful thing about having all this removal is we can just chill. Beat with the Malkator's Watchers. And then if they do go for something, we can respond accordingly. Because we have this O3 to kind of force them to use a combat trick or something. White, black. Bone Picker Scourge. We'll scry, see what we have. Chimera's actually good. I think we're just going to keep that on top. We'll draw it. I don't mind missing a land drop here. That's one of the reasons why I almost didn't scry, because a land and a non-land I was likely to keep. But there were cards that I wouldn't want. Like, I probably would have scryed away a Meldweb Strider. Even though it did such good work for us last game. We'll make these blocks. Nice, now we can play this guy. We'll see what they play second main. Okay. They're obviously aware that I have a ton of mana up. Continued answer, sure. Losing my Vigilance Flyer is not the end of the world. Because I did get to draw that card, which dug me deeper into my deck. I think Malkator's Watcher is just a pretty solid card. During the draft portion, I don't like to uh, interrupt guests when they're talking about something really interesting, and so I just make some of the picks in the background, but I was snapping up those Malkator's Watchers. Just getting them for the old curve. I always like those cards. Ooh, Indoctrination Assistant. The value. Ho, ho, ho. And now I will start scrying with this Glistener Seer more actively, because I don't want to draw any more lands. Now that I've got enough. Which is when scry gets pretty nice. Sure. So here, in this spot, I will Rebel Salvo the Indoctrination Attendant. And the reason I did that then was because if they had plus two, plus two, it would have lived at one toughness and I could then block it. Block there, block there. My one one is pretty nice, but 
And I do want to scry here. Ooh, I'll keep that. Just in case I drew, uh, wanted to scry away a bad card off that and then draw and then scry before my draw step in case it was really important. Okay, that's a great draw. I'm going to keep attacking. Okay, so that would give a lot of value to that guy. I'm going to take some damage from these guys no matter what. What I can do is actually save both of my creatures. And to do that, I use Serum Snare. Bounce this guy. Counter, proliferate. Add counters to everyone. Scry. I do like Soul Food. Oh, this is going to be used as a sorcery. Never mind. But having Solfam and then killing their Tapper is going to be good. So this can hit them for... Not quite lethal. So I'm just going to hit them for two. If it was a two-turn clock, I would have gone for it. But this can hit them for five. And then it can hit them... Because it can hit them for four. So I can hit them for six this turn. So they'd be at five right now. But then this thing can't kill them next turn. Because it would only have one oil counter left. So they still go to one. As it is, though, I get to use these lands for the defense. And having an extra blocker is good here. You might wonder why I'm doing this now, and it is primarily because I, uh, I probably could have done this first. They're gonna just chump, so I'll just take to the skies. I'm at 13. This is indestructible, so they'd have to have a passive, and then hit me for 2, 4, 5, 6, 10. But it would put me to 1, 2, 3, 4, 8 poison, so I can actually swing with both of these, because now it is a 2 turn clock. And I'll do the max pump here, because this thing can still become a 2-3 to block that guy. And then I'll pass. So I've got this draw step, I've got a lethal flyer attack. This is 1-2-3-4 four poison and five poison from this and I don't want to lose to a single proliferate so I'm just gonna block one of these guys and then they hit me for two three four eight damage I'll go to five um, but I won't die to proliferate if they have a single proliferate card or a card that gives me a poison if they have another copy of the plus two plus one I will lose but that isn't uncommon and I would lose to that anyway six eight nine ten Okay, and so we're still alive here. Oh, they're they're using their classic emotes. Trying to say good game. My turn. I forgot to use this. Classic Nikolai. Whew. Always good to play against a fan or 
in my head they were a fan, so, you know. Maybe they're a fan of Reed Duke and they somehow knew that Reed Duke helped me. I mean, that's a oxymoronic statement. And maybe they're not using that word correctly, but everyone's a fan of Reed Duke, so. Like the Venn diagram, where the Venn diagram just looks like a circle, because there's a complete overlap. But yeah, I'll see you folks next round. Welcome to another round. The all-star Meldweb Strider has made another appearance, and we have a two-drop in our opening hand. One of those proactive plays Reed was mentioning. Also, the Surgical Bays not coming in tap is going to hurt us because we do want to go 2-drop, 3-drop, 4-drop. But depending on what happens, we could just play a second one tapped and then go 3-drop, 4-drop, 5-drop. But that's definitely a card we want to block with the Malkathors. And if we draw another untapped land, it won't matter at all. And then they're just pure advantage because we'll get all the way up to 6 lands. And then we'll be in good shape. Oh no. Oh dear. Oh me oh my. That's sad. So we aren't going to get punished. Never forget that chip damage. It does add up. This could be a bad one for us. This card's pretty good. Oh no. Oh dear. Now I am going to block. Because I want to draw a Hex Gold Slash. That might be my only out. If we were on the play, would we be okay? I don't know. This is just a beatdown. But we're still in it. If they don't have anything here... We'll block here. Keep our guy around, because he can actually kill the Stinger eventually. And there's the Hex Gold Slash. Right on cue. So Meldweb actually lets us block this guy, but they can buff it. We really need to kill this. And this guy can block this guy. They don't have a combat pick, I don't think. Which means I can afford to hold back here. Only as a sorcery, okay. They're probably going to put it on the steward. We want to stop them at combat so they don't get a chance to attack. That's fine. So this is going to buff this up to a 6-4, but if we kill this, then we actually can block that. And the Axiom Engraver is going to do good work for us, too. This is a 5-3, which means we can double block it. Whereas if that thing was still around, we wouldn't be able to. Okay, we're still in this. Soulfin helps. First multicolored spell each turn, the other players draw a card, okay.
I'm going to ditch an island here because I have three blue sources, but if I want to use double red for this and cast another red spell, I won't be able to use it. I'm actually going to do this now. So actually, I'll just do it in response to a creature because Charge of the Mites is the only card I'm really worried about. This card can't exile Solfin. And this will be able to proliferate onto the Meldip Charger. This was actually a really good pick. Sure. I actually have a bounce spell, so if they do have the instant speed, like, punch my guy, I'll be okay. So that could even blow them out. Nope, they were just hoping I wouldn't go for it, maybe. Any land I can discard to that guy eventually. Now I'm gonna use my Meldweb Strider. Pass back. And then as soon as I have my Serum Snare up, I'll feel really good. Okay, that could be problematic. That can do a lot of damage. That can be very, very scary. My turn. That's a good blocker. This thing is big. I do need to draw my DL5 and destroying equipment. Mm -hmm. I can sacrifice this, so I will play this land. Rather than using up my one counter on this. Definitely chomping here. That could be good. Because I'm going to be drawing so many cards, I think I'm just going to bounce this now. Even though I don't get a proliferate out of it. It'll just buy me a lot of time. To use all the extra cards I'm going to draw. And I get to proliferate onto these guys. That's nice. There we go. I discard this land. So Molten Rebuke killing this equipment is going to really unlock my attacks. That's another great draw. I think we're going to win this game. At least according, according to my calculations. This game is as good as one. <laughs> Once again, the Mailed Web Strider. But yeah, we bought ourselves a lot of time. And we drew some pretty good cards there. It is time to start ending this game before they can find something to deal with Soul Fim. That's a good draw. Oh, 
hoping to leverage this Rebel Salvo effectively. Okay, they just go for the chump. And now I can hold up Rebel Salvo and potentially bring the ending, depending on what they go for. Yes! Bring the ending! It's doing its thing! Oh my gosh, we're in such good shape. Malkator's Watcher? Sure, I'll take it. It's a spell. It blocks. Okay. So they only have one flyer. So I can kill this, or I can kill this. I think I should have attacked with the Meldwip Strider here, potentially, but I want to be able to keep it as a blocker. The reason I'm doing it like this is because this way I get the best of both worlds, because I'll kill the Annex Sentry and get another Gitaxian Raptor, potentially. Feeling pretty confident here. Rib skip is fine. Because I can just kill the Annex Sentry and then swing for the win. In the sky. Okay, so I have to kill this in response. Got the win. Because otherwise they could like bring it back and exile another flyer and things like that. Got the win! Undefeated! The power of the Duke! Oh my gosh, this is sweet. See you folks next round. Welcome to another round. We're gonna keep this hand. We have our Glistener Seer and our Raptor. Oh my gosh. You can have an Immobilizer. White, black. Oh, your Double Striker does nothing. Your Double Striker has no power here. Doesn't attack well into an 03 or a 14. Neither does that guy. Actually, this guy attacks perfectly into an 03. What am I saying? We'll scry, see what we shall see. Synthesizer. I don't really want that right now. I'd rather draw it. I like, get closer to my soul fim. Okay, they have five cards. Now four cards. My 2-5 also lines up well here. Things are going pretty well. Oh, they sack their guy to kill my raptor? Two for one? Did somebody say two for one? I guess they get this might token. I'm blocking. Sure. Don't need that. As long as I can remain uncorruptible, my two five will protect me. Oh no. I could lose this game. I've drawn a lot of lands, and I uh, don't have my great cards yet. Kemba just making a bunch of tokens could just beat me. I think I scryed a couple lands to the bottom. No, I scryed the synthesizer, which to be fair is not a very good draw here anyway. This Jawbone Duelist is terrifying, because if this thing gets toxified, it's just huge. But they're missing land drops too, okay. First Blood! <laughs> oh, I really hope they don't draw a land. 
Okay, that's much better than the Kemba. <laughs> oh, never mind. This Kemba makes it bigger. I need to find a way to kill Kemba. Raptor. I'm gonna hold the lands in case I draw my looter guy. Stop at combat. So I can tap something with this immobilizer. Let's see what we shall see. That was not what I wanted to see. Okay, engraver we trust. Okay. We have to get some damage in. Maybe I'm just supposed to trade this for a 5-4. That could have been bad. But I feel like we have to chip in. Put some pressure. I'll take the hit for five. Because this thing won't last forever, is the thing. There's the classic saying that mana screw beats mana flood. This is kind of a... He's studying that. Oh, that could be good. this works. Proliferate's certainly nice. Especially on the Axiom Engraver, helping me find something good. I've got a lot of digging here. And these cats are not particularly mana efficient. I mean, that was... Oh my gosh. That's like a disgusting thing to do. I can't believe they just did that to me. That's just unkind. Sometimes you just flood in a game. We're just drawing none of the right cards. None of the right cards. Yeah, I think we lose. I think fairly comfortably at this point. They have a combat trick, I see. But we can't beat a combat trick.
I'll take seven. If they have nothing, which I assume they have something. Sure. Soul fin. So I can discard both the cards in my hand. Bring the ending is actually surprisingly useful for this stage of the game. I can kill the Kemba, I'm still in this. You're kidding me! Stop, land! Stop! Gosh. Honestly, just unlucky. We've drawn one, two, three, four, five. We've ditched five lands and scribed one to the bottom. And we, so we have 13 and. We don't have any lands left in the deck even. It's just super unfortunate that we're going to lose like this. Oh, well. I can't imagine Reed Duke getting tilted over this sort of thing, so I won't either. this I go to one seems fair I wonder why they didn't bother equipping beforehand unfortunately I don't have another counter on that ooh meldy web I like Meldweb here. Mm -hmm. So they're going to make a token. I have two blockers, plus, yeah, I have to hold back everything. Just not drawing my Hexfold Slash or my other burn spell has really made this game impossible. I've done a lot of digging for it to kill this Kemba. If I could have killed this Kemba like five turns ago, I would be actually winning, I think. Especially if I could have done it mid-combat to like blow him out. Maybe they don't know how Meldweb Strider works. That's my hope now. You're kidding me. This is just unlucky, honestly. Yep, that's game. They got me dead on board. And all their guys are indestructible and stuff, too, so they know I'm dead. 
Because if I play the Serum Core Chimera, they know there's nothing I can have for one mana. Unfortunate, but we will proceed. Welcome to another round. This is an interesting hand because it has no creatures. But it's definitely a keepable one. That last game, we just kind of saw the downsides of the Immobilizer because we couldn't use it every turn, which made it a lot harder for us. Overall, though, that was just statistically a very poor draw. I'll play this on turn one. I don't really have a two drop I can play, and so I might want to cycle this or something. I'll play the Malkator's Launcher. If this thing grows, we can bounce it, reset it back to the Stone Age. Okay, I'm glad we're going to do Dead. No blocks. Not really using the experimental augury for much. Let me kill that guy now. And then we'll see whether we want to serum snare something or use this augury. Mere Custodian. I'm going to use the Augury first so I get a better use of my Scrawl here. I'll put one into my hand. kind of want the land. I'll see if zero. Yeah, that thing definitely is supposed to trigger. Because now I have better... I know I'm hitting my land drop next turn so I can scry away any lands. Don't want the surgical thing. No blocks. I'll use the immobilizer. It's just more mana efficient because then I can serum snare plus next turn. And having this down when I use my serum snare. I don't know. This should be okay. But yeah, being able to bounce this now is pretty good. Okay, and now we just need some action. I think my draw three would be pretty good here. I'll just continue buying time. I can't think I'll leave this with two counters, though. Like, I'll chump the big guy next turn. But this guy can threaten to trade with the adaptive, so that can save me some damage. Never mind. This is what happens when your opponent just plays a bunch of creatures, and you play a bunch of dinky, like, very little spells. That could be good. They are just playing good cards. My deck would prefer if they were playing bad cards. But I guess every deck prefers that. This card's not very good. I just don't have a lot of creatures that can block these sorts of things. Four fours are big. Sure. 
I'll try to use my Chrome Prowler to trade with that guy. Let's hope Watcher draws us into something here. That's a something. I get less proliferate, rate, but they don't draw a card. They gain the three life no matter what, though. Big draw. Not super useful, but I'm still alive. He's not gone according to plan. Mostly because they only drew five lands, and then after that I just got completely bodied. And this is out of oil. Oh no. The writing's on the wall, I fear. Our deck is not winning this game. I think our deck... I can see why Reed said he runs 16 lands, because our deck... Oh, I just forgot to tap something. Oops. Oopsie daisies. We weren't winning that game either way, no matter what, so does not matter. But yeah, I can see why you run 16 lands, because I flooded a lot here. Or not flooded, but it feels like the games I lose are because I don't have, yeah, enough action. See you folks next round. Welcome to another round. We have a 4-2 and two record, but we'd obviously like to do better. On the continuing quest to be worthy of the deck that we have drafted. And we're keeping this hand, despite no red mana. Because we have a 2-drop and then a counter spell, plus we can hold a Chrome Prowler. I never doubted that we would hit our land instantly. And then next turn, we can either counter something or flash in the Chrome Prowler. And then the same decision to follow the turn. Perfect. We can Hex go Slash plus Slash. We'll see what their second color is. Green. So green probably might have some bigger creatures. Do I care about that? This is actually a really good opportunity to flash in the Chrome Prowler. Got there. We don't want to trade this off because it can crew our Meldweb Strider. I was hoping they had a combat trick I could counter. I could have maybe navigated that so that it worked out slightly better for me. Where, like, if they go for that, then I can blow them out with my thing, but I don't have a way of forcing them to use it. Which is the problem. and did use their whole turn and they didn't add to the board so I'd say this game is going pretty well they do have 6 cards in hand I think or maybe even 7 
I think six. Maybe. Oh, I can just check your hand. Six. Oh, we're rumbling, buddy. We didn't put Meld of Strider into our deck not to attack. What is this? The Amateur League? I have to say, I have been impressed by this card. It has done work. They make two one ones, sure. And I proceed to play my 1-3 and completely wreck them. Let's go! <laughs> Oh, yes, 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 yes. Let's see what they're up to. If they go for a combat trick, I can bounce their guy, and then I can attack with all of my troops. Because this won't have to crew. I'm not going to attack here. I'm going to discard this. Take for action. I have all this mana. Makator's Watcher is somewhat unlikely to win me this game, but it is a 5 turn block. That's a draw. I'll play the extra mountain. Oh no. Oh, they're jumping. Right, they have to jump. Duh. I thought they had a combat trick. I was like, oh no, what combat trick could they have? But no, they have to jump. The Meldweb Strider! Let's go! Also, this Malkator's Watcher, slowly but surely, victory is closing in. That's a draw. That is a draw. I assume they will go for the double block because they kind of have to, and then we get them. Also, they're going at three, so this thing will be lethal attacker next turn, too. And even a board wipe won't save them because of our fact this isn't a creature. Let's go! Meldweb Strider! Oh my goodness, this is a sick deck. This is great. Woo! Got the win! Five wins! A couple more, and we'll be at maximum. Gosh, I'm just. 
I'm so happy. <laughs> so happy. My my soul is filled with joy. If only Magic the Gathering Arena would choose this moment to ask him if, if I had fun in the match, I would have clicked uh, the yes with an enthusiasm. I was going to say enthusiastic, and then I <laughs> changed it to enthusiasm, which is why that sentence was poor grammatically, and I also said enthusiasm like a, like a dope. See you folks next round. Well, viewers, it has come to this. We have no mountains, but we have the dream curve of our deck, and we're on the play, so we're going to keep it <laughs> and hope for the best. <laughs> and they mulligan, let's go! <laughs> And they're merely silver. And the silver... I'm just kidding. Everyone's silver some at some point. I'm silver sometimes. Never underestimate your foe. Ooh, red card. The perfect draw. For when I draw my mountain. And eventually, the rebel salvo shall be in Pradeep. Ooh. Ooh. Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Okay, another red spell. Not the best thing to kick things off. But, eventually, it will be excellent comboing with this. Okay. They're playing some flyers. That's going to be a really good draw. I'm actually going to suicide this guy to try and draw out of my mountain. Because if we hit our mountain, we're in such good shape. Mountain me. No! Okay. I'm actually not going to sack this to try to find a mountain, I don't think. Maybe I will. But then I can't play this, which doesn't really matter because I kind of just need to get a mountain. Okay. I'll admit it. This keep is not panning out the way I was hoping, but there is still time. Mountain! Yes! Oh, I never doubted it for a second. Not even for a single instant. And now that I have two mountains, it shall be unstoppable. Oh my gosh. The Meldweb Strider is coming. Oh my gosh, they have four cards, I have five. The Fleshless Gladiator is a complete blank. I don't think this card is very good. Gosh, these are scary if they ever get corrupted going, but I don't think they will. Especially because Brick Wall City is about to come down and stop all of their ground game. Oh, all of the mountains. And the Serum Core begins to become scary. So if I draw any bad spells, I'll just keep them in hand. Currently, all of my spells are great! The Turning Reservoir, the re Engraver. This can also just draw you a card. Keep that in mind. You don't have to, like, discard it to zap something. Oh, that could be good. That could be very good. That could be quite good, in fact. This is the sort of spell that I could discard to the Chimera. They have 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11. Why do they can jump? That just doesn't do anything. Oh, it does do something. Hmm. I'm okay taking a hit. Why didn't I play my Axe even graver? That's a card. That is a card. Good combo with this. What do I want to kill here? Not really super worried here.
They're going to spend five for their kill spell, maybe. Keep in mind that I kind of have two functional blockers that don't look like blockers right now. Tap that guy. My turn. Put an oil counter there. Mm hmm. This guy's gonna be good, I think. Play this. Fire up the meld web. This can only activate at sorcery speed, remember. Go to combat. Attack. They block with everything. I'm pretty happy with that. The thing is, I want to make sure I end the game before they have time to draw something. So hitting them for five is a big deal. And I'm not going to make the 1-1, one, one, which is a little bit suspicious from their point of view, but I'll make the 1-1 one, one on their turn when I use the Immobilizer. And this can just draw me another card. Because I don't have to discard, remember? Sure, that doesn't do anything. Here, I could put oil here, I could put oil here. I'm gonna put the oil on my Mara. Draw a card. I don't wanna discard either of these. Actually, saving myself the mana and just getting rid of this is probably good. Killing their 2 2 flyer. I don't have any great attacks here. They have one, four. Crew. I kind of want to cast this so I can get an oil counter on the synthesizer. We shall see with this. I have so much to spend my oil on. Oh, that's a good draw. Tap that guy. My turn. Put the oil counter onto the immobilizer. I would love to start stacking up this synthesizer, though. Ooh, sulfur.
crew. Go to combat. Attack. End turn. This is a very a game that I'm taking very slow and steady. It's also the downside of the corrupted deck. Oh, can this hit planeswalkers? But Kaya's indestructible. Kaya's hexproof. Okay, I can beat that. Where do I want this? Probably on the synthesizer. Perfect, just what I needed. Put that into my hand. Submit six? Oh my god. Tap this. I will. How's this? Six. Activate. Discard. Kill. This. I have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then on the ground, so this is three, so they're going to seven. This is, if I kill this flyer I'm talking about, they have two blockers, and I have plenty of attackers on the ground. So this is three, five. Three, five, nine, then I'll hit them with something here. Got the win. Holy heck. I have so many counters running around. Gosh, that's insane. My goodness. I was just kind of sculpting the game for so long. Woo! Got there. They were just trying to jam their Kaya, but that was what really pushed me into action. The Metal Glove Strider was huge there. Wow, we're gonna, we could get a trophy here. We're one game away. This is the last round. So either we'll get to max wins or we will get six wins, which is still pretty good. But still, the drama. We gotta get that trophy. I'll see you folks next round. We have made it to the final round and we are on the play with a great hand. We just need to hit some lands and then Soulfim will win us the game. That's the plan. Glistener Seer will be on scry duty, trying to get us there. We won't scry on the very first turn. Like, we won't scry on our second upkeep, but we'll scry on their end step, and then we'll scry on our next upkeep if we still haven't hit a land. Hoping for a land. Okay. 
to set a stop on our upkeep. Okay, this is the moment of truth. Okay. Land, perfect. And it's even a mountain, so we can get our soul film going. It's red-white, so they could have some stuff, but generally pretty good here. Attack. Like attack team after. If they had blocked, I would have zapped the fuseling and then killed their guy. We're gonna set a stop on upkeep again. Cause we really just want to jam this soul thin. Red White has trouble with that sort of thing. It's got answers. They're not unbeatable, but yeah. Land? Nope, not a land. Yes, got there. And here they have mana up, so I'm just gonna just play this, hit them with the raptor. And play Solfin and hope for the best. Our Glistener Seer is now just purely an O3 blocker, but maybe we'll draw something up later and we can still do stuff. Well, that makes me sad. But it gets around indestructible, so it would have been bad for us no matter what. They are taking some damage from their stuff here. We will kill that. In case they have a kill spell at some point, just get in the damage now. Maybe I should have I should have left one oil counter on it because I have proliferate stuff. Okay, let's see. I'm glad I got in the damage when I had the chance. And I'm gonna play the second raptor now, because this means that I can then tap their flyer next turn. Be in good shape. They're hitting me with it? What? Well, I'm certainly not blocking it. I'll tell you that much. That's a shock. Turn of events. The land is actually fine there because we can then use that to make a token. So let's put them to seven. I want to put them to six. That's a bit risky. I'm just going to put them to seven. Gosh, unfortunate. So depending on what we draw here, we can put the counter on the raptor so we can make another 1-1. One, one. This is a close game. It's really up for grabs. I'm feeling favored, though.
That's a heck of a draw for the future. So we're hitting him like this, because that sets up lethal next turn. We're not going to block. Sure. That is a draw. But now we have a good triple block on this resistant Sky Warden. Oh my gosh, we're so close to the trophy. I can taste the rainbow, as they say. Strider. What do I want to cast this Vivisurgeon's inside? They have to block there, and then they block there, and there, and they die. They don't have anything. But I lose if I go for that and it doesn't work. So is their last card something relevant is the question. But I'm going to make a 1-1 one -one every turn. So I kind of win this stalemate state. Gosh, it's so tough. Because I could. they have three blockers. I attack with everything. And then they go block. 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 I think it's worth going for. Got there. Woo! Can't play scared. You gotta play to win. Let's go. The trophy. I feel like we made Reed Duke proud. At least in the way we played that. Got the maximum wins. With the assistance of the man, the myth, the legend. The winner of Pro Tour Phyrexia helping us draft this deck. It went off the rails a bit, but we circled back and ended up with an excellent blue-red deck. And I'm so... <laughs> yes! Just, I feel great. I feel like we didn't let him down. We took this excellent deck. We used the Meldweb Strider. We used the Anatomist. The Gataxian Raptor. The beautiful Malkator's Watcher. All of these random cards coming together to form a cohesive unit. The Solfim that he recommended we take in pack two coming in so clutch. If you made it till the end of this video, be sure to check out Reed's stuff. It was really nice of him to come on as a guest. So check out his Twitch streams, his articles, all of the stuff he does for Channel Fireball. It will be linked in the description below. You can also follow him on Twitter and all of that stuff as well. He's just a, one of the best players to ever play the game. He's one of my favorite pros. I always root for him. And so I think you should root for him as well because he's awesome. And it was great for him to come on as a guest and help us draft this sweet deck. If you did enjoy this video and you enjoy me having guests, to let me know you made it to the end in the comment section down below. Leave hashtag uh reading signals but read with an eye because uh reed helped us read those signals find the blue red deck 
I don't know if I would have gone for those Serum Core Chimeras and the red cards without him. But regardless, lead hashtag reading signals rewarded because I guess we got the maximum wins. So yeah, to let me know you made it to the end of this video because it's always cool to see who makes it all the way till the end. Remember to hit that like button if you do enjoy it as well. Uh, subscribe for more draft videos. Let me know who you'd like to see me try to get on as a guest in the future. But honestly, I mean, <laughs> once you've had Reed as a guest and uh, all, I mean, it, it, it just like, that's like what, how you know you've made it, <laughs> I guess. But that feels really awesome. So uh, I love having guests on. I really enjoyed this draft. We got the maximum wins. So really just the perfect video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I guess if you made it to this point, you probably did. But yeah, um, have a great rest of your day and I'll talk to you next time.